Noah Gregson has been suspended indefinitely. And with just four races left until the NASCAR Cup Series playoffs, let's hear directly from some bubble drivers. How's it going, y'all? My name is Eric. Welcome to Out of the Groove. I am inside of Michigan International Speedway. You can probably hear that buzzing in the background. That's a Cup Series practice. I think Group B is on track. We're in a hostile recording environment, but I had to sit down and make a video real quick. My second video of the day. If you missed it earlier this morning, I uploaded a video I did yesterday at the Roush Automotive Collection. I had the chance to go check out basically race cars from my childhood, cars I grew up watching on TV, racing as in video games. They had the real thing set up that you could just go visit for free in nearby Livonia, Michigan. So go check that video out after this one in case you missed it. But let's Let's get to the breaking news today. Noah Gregson, rookie for Legacy Motor Club, has been suspended by Legacy Motor Club and has now also been suspended by NASCAR. Let's begin with Legacy Motor Club's statement because this came out of absolute nowhere. We have made the decision to suspend Noah Gregson effective immediately regarding his actions that do not represent the values of our team. Josh Berry will drive the number 42 entry for this weekend's NASCAR Cup Series race at Michigan. Josh Berry, super sub. Let's see, he's driven the nine, he's driven the 48, now he'll drive the 42 this year. Am I missing any? But Josh Berry is not the story here. Noah Gregson is, and Noah tweeted his own statement earlier this morning. Gregson said, I am disappointed in myself for my lack of attention and actions on social media. I understand the severity of this situation. I love and appreciate everyone. I try to treat everyone equally, no matter who they are. I messed up, plain and simple. Shortly after Legacy Motor Club chose to suspend Gregson, NASCAR came down with their official ruling saying, NASCAR fully supports Legacy Motor Club's decision to suspend Noah Gregson following his actions on social media. NASCAR has determined that Gregson has violated the member conduct section of the 2023 NASCAR rulebook and has placed him under indefinite suspension. A lot going on here, indefinite. That could mean more than this week. That could mean multiple weeks. <laughs> That could mean the whole season. I honestly don't know how NASCAR will react to this going forward because I'm sure many of you are asking, what did Noah Gregson do? What did he actually do to justify this extremely harsh penalty? I must admit, I do not know for sure exactly what he did, although there have been some screenshots floating across social media. I don't want to share them because they aren't verified, but there are some screenshots of Noah Gregson allegedly liking a offensive meme on, I think, Instagram or some social media platform. I'm not gonna go further into the details again. That's unconfirmed, but if those screenshots are true, it's not something that Noah Gregson himself posted on his platforms. It was something that someone who knows in the world posted that Noah Gregson hit the like button on and likes on most social media platforms are public, so people saw that. There was some hubbub created on social media as a result, and Legacy Motor Club and NASCAR reacted. Look, I'm not the type of guy who likes to scrutinize what people like on social media, but at the same time, Noah Gregson has to understand the position he's in. He is a public figure who represents many major corporations, corporations that are afraid of any and all potentially negative publicity. The meme that Noah Gregson allegedly liked that's been floating around social media was extremely edgy, really dark, offensive. It was tasteless, it was dumb. You can argue that it's dumb for someone to be suspended for liking a social media post. And, and I may agree with you there, but at the same time, it's equally if not more dumb for someone in Noah Gregson's position to make such a blatant mistake. Look, only half of being a race car driver is actually having talent behind the wheel. The other half is how sponsor friendly are you? What's your personality like? Do fans like you? Do corporate sponsors like you? That has always been half the job. And Noah Gregson, we've questioned his maturity in the past. He still has not figured out that half of the role. So I don't like suspending people for liking things on social media, but that's the world we live in. Legacy Motor Club has sponsors that they have to answer to. NASCAR has sponsors that they have to answer to. Noah Gregson put everyone in a very difficult situation by being dumb, by just being stupid. 
And the timing on this is even more terrible for Noah Gregson and his career, considering that just a few days ago, we were talking about a report from The Athletic that Toyota, when you know they and Legacy Motor Club join forces next year, Toyota is looking to replace Gregson with John Hunter Nemechek. They are actively looking to replace Noah Gregson before this controversy. This controversy is only going to expedite that process. Toyota might even sweeten the deal to Martin Truex Jr. even more to ensure he stays so that they can put John Hunter in the 42. I don't know, maybe that's just speculation, but the timing is terrible. Noah Gregson has already had a terrible, terrible rookie season, and I defended him earlier this week saying not all of it is his fault. Legacy Motor Club has clearly taken a step backwards. They're in a lame duck year with Chevrolet, but I mean, Noah Gregson has made more than his fair share of mistakes this year. Now he's making mistakes off track as well. Again, that is half the job. Whether you like it or not, half the job is being sponsor friendly. Noah Gregson walks a very fine line. And in this case, unfortunately, he crossed it. To steal a line from Richard Childress Racing, the timing of this could not be any worse. I really hope the audio is okay because I think like there was a caution on track so they were quiet for a bit, but now the cars are back on track and they're just like buzzing in the back of my head. My microphone is working overtime here. Hopefully it all sounds okay. I hope Noah Gregson learns from this. Look, being a public figure is hard. Certain people, certain jobs can get away with shocking, edgy, offensive jokes. Not NASCAR drivers, no. You can't get away with that here. Not when you have you know, millions of dollars of finicky corporate sponsorship propping you up. So that's that, that's my reaction. I did get the chance earlier today, before this news broke, to talk to several NASCAR Cup Series playoff bubble drivers. I got to talk to them about this race at Michigan coming up tomorrow, as well as the next couple weeks of road courses. I wanna share some of those clips with you real quick. I talked to Michael McDowell, who's currently 18 points above the cut line, holding on to that final playoff spot. I asked him about his confidence level going into not only this weekend, but especially the two road courses coming up where McDowell has historically run really Really well at. We, we know that we're gonna have decent speed. Um, you know the issue that we have is so are the guys that were racing for the cutoff, right? <laughs> when you look at AJ Allmendinger and you look at Daniel Suarez and even Ty Gibbs, it's not like those guys aren't good at road courses. If anything they're really good. Um, but the flip side of that is so are we. And so we're going to be able to manage, we're going to be able to score some points, and I think we'll be able to score stage points. And in years past, we were always trying to win the race, not trying to score points, right? Yeah. And so we always would flip the stages, we'd always pit two to go. And so I don't have a lot of stage points on road courses because we were always on that strategy where now that's kind of wiped away. So when we're running third or fourth, we're gonna get those stage points and it's not gonna hurt our strategy. McDowell mentioning some of the drivers he's racing around for the final playoff spot. He mentioned AJ Allmendinger. Uh, AJ Allmendinger, great road course racer. All eyes will be on him next weekend at Indy and the week after at Watkins Glen. So I asked AJ Allmendinger if he feels Colleg Racing's road course performance is where it needs to be. Is he feeling confident? I don't know if I ever use the word confident for myself. Uh, you know, I think we we have room to improve for sure. Uh, you know, I think it's one of those things that if, if we if we nail the setup, like we can contend and, and run up front and have a shot to, to go maybe possibly win the race. Um, but also at times when we miss it, you know, we're we're not very good. I think Chicago kind of was disappointing. We just we just missed the setup. Uh, I think some of it too is trying to figure out. How do we get to the right setup? You know, sometimes sim kind of leads you down a bad path, and that's all you have. And in a short practice session, it once once you miss it, you miss it. So, um, but yeah, I mean, it's. I think we'll see after this weekend, kind of the mindset of do we have to go win the race or are we still racing for points? And you know, we'll kind of see how Sunday goes, and we'll make the judgment from there. I appreciate the honesty there from AJ Allmendinger, but he doesn't sound quite as confident as I would like. He's 22 points below the cut line. He doesn't need to win any of these races, but he needs probably top fives. He needs to collect some stage points at Watkins Glen in Indianapolis to have a shot at pointing his way in, especially when you consider Ty Gibbs, Michael McDowell, two good road racers are ahead of him. Then lastly, I asked Daniel Suarez about Trackhouse. You know, ever since that win at Nashville, and I know Shane Van Gisbergen won at Chicago, but really both Daniel Suarez and Ross Chastain have been very inconsistent. We've seen Suarez lose more and more points to the cut line every single week. He's now 34 points out. I asked him what Trackhouse needs to do to find some consistency. Here's what he said. We're not very surprised uh, in 
the low down force package because that low down force has been it's been a little bit of a struggle not a lot but a little bit and um, so we're not super surprised on that uh, but uh, in the normal down force tracks package like here in Michigan uh, we should be we should be fine so uh, you know we have we have some good race tracks coming up for us and uh, we have to take advantage of it We'll have plenty more to talk about after Michigan this weekend, but that's going to do it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to hit that subscribe button. We talk about the latest NASCAR news almost every single day. Good, and unfortunately, like today, sometimes bad. Uh, and thank you to my Patreon supporters as well for your very generous support. It's thanks to you guys that I'm able to come out here to Michigan and document some of these races, hear from these drivers firsthand, and share that with you all. So I really appreciate your support. If you're coming out to Michigan tomorrow, keep an eye out. I'll be out in the uh, fan areas most of the morning, so uh, I'll see you then. Enjoy the Xfinity race later today. Have a wonderful weekend, folks. Thanks for tuning in.